Welcome everyone to another episode of Inside Edge. Tom Aulis, co-founder, managing partner here at Edge Home Finance. And today I get the privilege to sit with a longtime friend of mine, Mr. Michael D. Wright. Yes, uh, sir. With, uh, yes, sir. With uh, Mortgages Done Right. Um, known Mike for, man, I don't know. We've known each other quite a long, long time. time. Yeah. Um, you've been with us now for... Four years? Yeah, coming up, come on, four years. God, I finally got that one right. <laughs> yeah. I was sitting with Andy on one of our past episodes. I've been, what, six years? Like, no, it's been nine. I'm like, whoa. Well, so, time flies when you're having fun, yeah, buddy. Yeah, that's four, four years, so, you know, half of your professional career. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, you've been in the industry, though, quite a long time, right? Yeah, I've, I, I stopped counting at 25 and just put a plus behind it. Well, you know? well, that's good. We'll walk through. I always like to... You know, the main purpose of these is to really give our team members an idea of who's in, who's around Edge. Like, who's here? Why are you here? Um, I like to run through a little bit of an origin story so that way um, people get a chance to know who you are. We get to learn a little bit at, uh, a little bit more about you. And I always get to learn things, too, which is uh, one of the reasons why I love doing these. So Perfect. Um, let's give me the rundown. Start from uh, Little Mikey. Like, when Mikey <laughs> was little, where did Little Mikey grow up? I grew up in Edina. Oh, and, uh, oh, the, the, yeah, I know. Here we go. Stuck. You know, knowing the guy for how many years. Uh, now we go. Uh, now it makes uh, sense. Youngest of seven. Yeah. Wow. By eight years, mind you. So uh, when I was growing up, it was a um, getting bashed and getting beaten up yes. and getting, you know, fighting for food and all that stuff was part of the gig. You I think know? you and Chris Hack are sharing that then. Now that I think, because Chris came from, he's got a ton of brothers uh, yeah. and sisters. I don't know how many, I think nine maybe. Well, I love it. And he I was mean, the youngest uh, as well. So, wow. So I know a couple, I know one of your brothers, uh, Bill. Yep. I don't know if I know any of the other ones, but uh, so I grew up in Edina, played sports. What, yeah, what played you know? some football, basketball. Uh, Matt Ishbia, if you need me on the songs, just my my six inch vertical is amazing, buddy. Just give me a buzz. Uh, that's awesome. so. Anyway, so yeah, and then went up to college to UMD. Okay, and uh, you know the illustrious five years up there. Yes, and a two year uh, degree after five years. Yeah, I like it. and so I ended up uh, once I graduated from there. It was what do you do? Yeah, right. Five yep. years of UMD. Uh, so what did you I, graduate with? What, what type of degree did you? I had a business administration, okay, marketing, uh, communication background, okay, and then I worked at a company called Cityside Savings, okay, which was basically high interest rate loans. Yeah, it was owned by C.H. Robinson, okay, and so I was the guy out there collecting payments, yep, and repoing cars. There you go. You know, where was that at? Was that uh, in the Twin uh, Cities Eden or Prairie. Okay. Yeah, Eden Prairie at the corporate office at C.H. Robinson, and so um, I loved it. Gave yep. me good experience. Um, I didn't like repoing. Yeah, I didn't like calling people for payments. Yeah. It's not my yeah, personality, work to get that's started, right? Deal. And then uh, moved over to Minnetonka Financial with a great buddy of mine, employee of Edge, uh, Perry Hemmicke. Nice. And so uh, Bill Slavin started that company. And like you said, it's a long time ago. And here I sit. And I've been at a lot of different places. I mean, yeah. that's uh, the animals will tell you. Yes. Um, I owned a company, uh, 50 employees. That 15, was what, Discover? Yeah, Discover yeah. Mortgage. Yep. Uh, 15 offices, lots of leases. Yeah. And it, it makes me appreciate so much on what Chris, you, Chantel have created because you don't have the exposure. Right. Right? You've created the best of the best and now are hiring the best of the best. Yeah. Yeah, it's <clears> definitely... <throat> You definitely <laughs> learn a lot going through, I would say, some of the struggles that we've both went through. Now, I would say I've been in it 22 years, but you've yep. really, I mean, if we really say, like, what year did you enter the mortgage industry? I'm going to say, Tom, first of all, I can't remember what I ate today. So, I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, we're just not getting the details, but I'm going to say probably 1990. Okay. You know, somewhere right in, that, right in that era. All right. So, you got about 33 years in the industry. Um, yeah. So, you've seen, I mean, you've went through the highs, the lows, <laughs> the in-betweens. Yes. And, 
Uh, you're yeah. definitely right. I mean, it's uh, to me, I think you get an opportunity to where those are all experiences. You know, for, yeah. for me, it was the same. We share Perry was one of uh, was one of my um, partners uh, where we had mortgage banking corp. Me, Perry and Jake Kornberg. And yeah, that was one of those uh, companies that didn't withstand the storm. Right. It was really tough. Uh, 2007, 2008, when everything everything collapsed where were you when the market collapsed then on the last the last one the 2000 um we had an office right off 394 oh that was still discovered 100 oh discovered. that's right okay yeah and i, mean, I think that's it's a weed just, factory now or a dispensary isn't it well it's it's uh they've got all commercial buildings this yeah. was a two or three story deal yes and now they're all just big buildings yeah um i remember I, that though well, i remember I that remember sign the, because you guys had the cool marketing where you would actually have, right? Because it's on 394. Yeah. The main, um, I would say, like, junction getting into Minneapolis from the west suburbs. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and you guys would always have the interest rates up there. And to me, like, even before I really even knew that that was, a, like, smart, it always catched my eye. Um, yeah, there was a uh, gentleman by the name of Dick Shue that kind of created that deal. Yeah. We had, I had been gone prior to that. Mm -hmm. Um it was an interesting deal, right? We looked down the hallway, me, Perry, and Bruce Goss, and no one's around. Yeah. We're like, what in the heck is going on, right? Yep. Interest rates rose. People ran out of just getting free leads. Yeah. Free leads, free leads. So um, it was tough. Yeah. So finally, we decided to sell to a publicly traded company learning lesson in and of itself yeah oh yeah but what they had bought that building and uh the the rates up there were huge yeah yeah and it was, that was cool. a great gig it was smart we've actually i've actually thought if we ever have a now granted we have a new office we're moving into but it's not uh it's not one that has the visibility of being right, right on the right. highway but uh wicked smart i uh i like i like that from the beginning so mortgage collapse happened what'd you do next uh it was a humbling experience, man. Yeah. I mean, it was, uh, it took me two, three years to really bounce back. Yeah. Made some money on a sale. Yep. But it, uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Yeah. Right. And so I love this business. Um, it's so rewarding, but I always managed. Yeah. Right. I originated some, but I managed. Yes. And so now I had to go reinvent myself again. And it was always, where is the grass greener on the other yeah. side? And yeah. I went, I've been at banks, I've been at correspondence, um, you know, Fairway a couple times, Amic, you know, yeah, all over the place because you always want to believe that the company is the answer. Yes. Company ain't the answer. Guys. Yeah. Here's the deal. It's a matter of you getting out and hustling. I mean, I came in today. Here's a prime example. So this guy, no wonder Nicole loved to marry this guy. I mean, he gets to wake up early and see this guy every single day. It's amazing. So I'm driving down the highway, and, you know, it's early, and Tom's light's on. <clears throat> what you guys don't see with him is he is here at 5 o'clock in the morning and oftentimes doesn't leave till 6 or 7. So when you want to be like him, it just doesn't happen. There is no magic pill. You got to get out and hustle. And, you know, 18 leads a, a day or whatever comes into this cat is uh, not because he's just good looking. right? It's uh, <laughs> because he simply works his tail off and has got great partnerships. So yeah. I applaud you for that. Buddy. Yeah, I appreciate it. I can tell, tell you, you know, I'll just... Uh, I'll say I've noticed a change in you from when you first came here. Right? Yeah. Um, we made it through the origin story, so now we're, we're going to move on to the couple, couple others parts here. So when you and I first, when you decided to come join Edge, right? I know Andy was talking with you. I was talking with you. You came, came in, but you were still a little bit. And I like how you said it. You have to not only reinvent yourself, but like, you have to like stop expecting the company to do what you know yep. to fix everything right yep. um and one of the things that I, I would say that i've noticed a massive switch in you is like adopting that thumb pointer attitude right, yeah, right and it took right. a little bit because of course you know for a lot of us especially being in management prior yeah and it's always like okay fix us like right i mean to me it's still like we have things all the time 
that our lending partners need to fix. Like nothing is ever going to be perfect, Correct. right? But yeah. I've really watched you adapt to um, accountability, right? And really looking and saying, okay, hey, if something didn't go right, I, and this is like, you, I hate to make this joke, but it's kind of funny. Like, it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks, Amen. right? You've been yeah. in this industry for a lot of years. Amen. And I was I worried for you for a little bit because I've seen that uh, with people to where it's like always somebody else's problem, Correct. right? Yep. And yep. I watched you probably in the first year try to get traction, like you said, reinventing them. I have to go out and start making new relationships again, even though you already had them, but like, hey, I'm on the front lines again. Can I help? You know, what can I do? And you obviously get the opportunity because you're likable, trustworthy, you work hard, you've got a cool brand, right? Mortgage yeah. is done right. Um, I, I've copied a lot of the stuff that you've brought into our office, even like creating a referable experience. Yeah. It's one of the things that are on your wall that to me, you know, as a self generating originator is key, right? Yeah. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> what's cool about this is I feed off you guys, right? I see some of these guys come in, Jake, Josh, Andy, yeah. Sid. Yeah. I mean, Sid's been in this business for Six years? Six years. Yeah, five years. And I mean, the dude is just uh, crushing it. And yep. so I watch all you guys on this board, right? On the Edge Connect. It's so cool. But again, you got to get out and hustle. I'm competing with all of you, yeah, right? Yeah, 100%. And that's an intense deal being 60 years old, Yeah. right? And yep. how do you get out and hustle? Yeah. So I appreciate all that. Um yeah, well, it's it true. Is, I mean, it is, it. you know, but I agree. I mean, I've always, where is that? You have to become accountable. And I look at even our board where people will get out there and ask questions. Yeah. Right? And I I was taught by a lady by the name of Kate Wilson long ago at Fairway. Her deal is look up the guidelines. I yep. went in there all the time, and I probably still do. It's too much to you, but... Um, Asking questions, asking questions, asking questions. And she said, Mike, have you exhausted all your resources yeah. to get answers? Yes. And my answer was, no, I want to come to you. Yeah, exactly. I like the you easy know, way. Easy, yeah. You know? yeah. And she said, nah, don't do that anymore. Yeah. Once you exhaust everything, come to me. No. And I think that we can all learn from that because we have so many resources. 100%. UWM yeah, source, the source and the, the guidelines. 26-7 if you're yeah. doing VA loans or the, the FHA handbook. 100%. And truthfully, I'm I'm even guilty of that at some times, yeah. right? Now, a lot of times it helps because there aren't guidelines on, hey, who does the best lot loan for... I've never done... Right, I've always right, referred this right, stuff, right, right? right? I've referred it to the local credit union. But now, you know, one, business has shrunk a little. Right. So right, do right. I really want to refer over a $500,000 land lot loan deal? Like, no, I want, I want to figure out how to do that, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and we've seen a lot of our originators even you know, expand into commercial and to, there's a gentleman in Colorado, Mac Humphrey, that has been doing these, the CMG all in one, right? Yeah, he's out there right. pitching, um, pitching financial advisors and he's selling it and crushing yeah. it, right? It's, uh, but to reverberate what you stated is really like one of the things that helped you learn throughout your career to get better exhaust the options that you have. I think that's key, right? And I would say for any of our listeners that are part of the Edge family here, like you have the resources. Oh, you just need to be resourceful, right? Yep. And I think that that comes into play in a lot of different aspects, not only looking up guidelines, but even, you know, if you're at a point to where, let's say that your Q1 wasn't where you wanted to be. Right. What did you do, right? I mean, Correct. looking in self-reflection in an industry to where we are really in a, you have to kill something to eat it, right? And I hate to use that kind of gross, uh, <clears throat> gross analogy, but it's the truth. If it's you reality. don't, if you don't, you're not going to eat. There's no. no guaranteed pay to where you can coast here. It's if you do not bust your ass, if you don't work, um, you know, for me. I, I have, I don't know, I don't want to say I have an ego, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't. I right. like, you have to. I like leading from in front, right? Yeah. 
Um, and I know that there's guys chasing me, right? And I feel it. I can tell. I guarantee you I got here this morning at 5. I bet Major was there at probably 4.58, right? I right, mean, right. You know, right. The, it's, but to me, those are the things that drive each other. Even though you're in competition, we're a team in competition, right? And it's yes. the same like you stated it within this office. Yeah, there's competition. You're damn right, right? You know what I mean? But at the same time, there's also, you know, camaraderie, support. Hey, what can we do? What's doing it to work? Right. You've you've actually started something uh, recently with a group on Facebook, similar to where I did a piece on Jay. It was Jay Bunty that started that uh, uh, Keller community group. Yeah. Right? It was something that was really cool. I watched him build it. You've done that now with this group called Minnesota Realtors, yep. right? Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, it's one of those that you probably didn't even know what the hell you were doing, <laughs> right? You started this web, this Facebook group and, uh, yeah, oh, cool. Then all of a sudden, before you know it, you've got like a thousand yeah. agents that are part of that group, right? Yeah. And you were an inspiration behind that, right? Because yeah. I was always like, how do you get out? Right, you can't just assume people are gonna come to you. Yeah. How do you reach out to people? So with Jake's help and with your inspiration doing these things, yeah. I started interviewing a realtor of the week. Yeah. Right? And yep. it's so cool because it allows me to learn yes. from these people. Yeah. Right. And I think that um I know Andy does one with different LOs. Yep. And it's it's so cool because, like I said, how do we how do we add value to agents? Hundred percent. I'm not a believer in just opening up the pocketbook. Pay, 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 pay. Yeah, it's not how I want to operate. Correct. I want to be able to help people, young agents especially. Yeah. Learn what old cats do. Yeah. Yep. And I'm going to be interviewing a great lady today who is both down in Minnesota and Florida. Yeah. How does she balance that? Yeah. Right? This and is so, on your uh, MN yeah, Realtors? Yeah. MN Beautiful. Realtors that we uh, publish tomorrow. Yeah. And, Who's the agent? Uh, uh, Michelle Christensen. Okay. Awesome. And so um, I'm going to have a, uh, you know, just it's, it's fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's this. Be. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Get so, a chance to learn about someone. Hopefully someone that's listening catches a nugget to where, for me, I've stopped even listening to the radio as much. Like before I'd go on a road trip and yeah. I'd listen to music. Now for me, it's like, I learn to listen to a podcast. One, they're entertaining. Two, I tend to learn something or pick something up. So, um, well, it was great this morning. So what you guys don't know again about Tom is I was up early. I come walking in and... All of a sudden, I'm hearing hip hop, <laughs> yeah, hip hop. You know, jamming. so we get going. I got some coffee rolling, and uh, you know, got my got my Joe on. You I know? like my so. early morning hip hop session as I'm as I'm working. You know, to me, it's one of those. I schedule my day from nine to five on availability, right? Meaning, anyone who wants to meet with me, I have a link on my email signature. Um, my schedule is usually packed from nine to five. Oh, it's unbelievable. So then. You know, you have to find time to still like do your business. Bring home the bacon. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that is hard to quantify when you look at uh, you know return of investment. You know, Matt Ishby is real big on this. On yeah. looking at okay, what's my ROI on this? And he doesn't care, right? I mean, he said right, it's not, it's not about that. It may like even success track for him, right? One of the only companies I know that not only spend the money to bring people out and train them, but you know, do something like that. What is his return of investment? Correct. And you can ask him. I don't care. And yeah. it's not being stupid to where you're just blowing money, but it's like some things um, align with what your values are. Right. right? And for me, um, that's really like being of service, right? I, right. I want to be of service. I probably do, I don't know, four or five meetings a day that are completely a waste of my time, right? Right, right. and not to, yeah. not to be rude, but it's like it's not self serving um, to me. Like, but that's part of what I call like this. You being you, right? Yep. Yeah, but it's like the <clears throat> giver's gain. You're in B and I, like yeah. I am, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm a big B and I guy. I believe in giver's gain. Yeah. So it's like the more I can give, the more <clears throat> I can help. Um, whether you believe in God or you believe in you know a rock, it, it doesn't matter. You believe in something bigger than you. To me, my belief, um, 
I know that I'm I'm rewarded by doing good for others, right? Yep. And helping, helping, being there, being of service. And um, that's a lot of the reasons why I do it, but it always yields results. Just like yeah. for you. Yep. You know, you've yeah. been in B&I now for, for how long? I think that's a newer it, thing it's, since it's you started a, It's here. a four-year deal. Yeah. And I loved it. I've been at startup groups. I've, now I'm in a fantastic group. Yeah. Based out of uh, Core Connections, out of Chaska. We do it all remote. Right, it's Which all done great, Zoom, isn't it? and it's sweet. I do, you know I what do. I mean. But I, I put a post out there on the Edge site um, because Tom, I think that what you do, you're a leader, right? But leaders just don't sit there and say, "Look at me." Yeah, it's how do you get that fruit underneath you to yeah. grow? Yeah. And you guys, this this guy, um, Chantel, Chris, Nick. And the people at corporate care so much about this organization. I was thinking about this driving in. We don't have these hurdles, right? You don't have problems. It's just a smooth ship. Well, that it doesn't just do itself, right? These people behind the scenes are working their tails off. Oh, yeah. And if you don't have an opportunity to stop by corporate, um, and the girls that handle payroll, and uh, Chantel and Chris... Nick, send him a note and thank him for everything they do. Uh, Tom's the front person, right? He's the face person, <coughs> right? But uh, make sure you thank him because yep. they've done a hell of a job uh, bringing on every day we got a new lender. And the tools, Tom's going to be talking about payroll immediate. I mean, that's an incredible pain in the ass, right? Oh, it is. Chantel's but, been working nonstop it, on, on that. It's just been, like you said, I mean, it's, uh, there's a lot of things that happen behind the scenes that people don't see that uh, are sacrifice, right? Even yeah. Chris and Chantel, like, you know, Chris posted on this story uh, on Edge Connect, like when we first started, right? It right. was, um, right, none of us were in a situation in 2011 where right. we had piles of money, right? I know they exhausted their 401k to make to make their rent payment, to be able to get everything in, to, um, it's taken a lot of sacrifice and really, you know, I'm thankful for really the team that we have, right? The Correct. team that we have here, the team that you mentioned that we have at corporate, which we are now starting now yeah. at the end of this month, that will be Excited. one office. So if you haven't got a chance to come to lovely Minnesota, hopefully the snow will be gone. Uh, by the end of this month, but we are having our grand opening here. I'm I kept saying April 29th, but I think it's April 28th. I think right, it's Jake? the 28th. Yep. Yeah, 28th. Yeah. Um, which is going to be a really good event. And I have some cool things happening at that party. Uh, right? It's fun. I mean, it's a beautiful office. And I, um, you know, like you said, t Tom and these guys have created a model that is crazy. <clears throat> I mean, there is nobody that is closing deals faster than us, getting approvals faster than mm -hmm. us. But Everybody, it's all about us on the front end. You have to be detailed. You have to get everything yep. up front. Yep. If you don't, um, I'll use the term shit in, shit out. But yep. on the flip side, that's 100%. what it is. Yep. And so the more thorough you are, your loan officer assistant's going to love you. Your processor's going to love you. But more importantly, the wholesalers that you send deals to are going to love you. Yep, yep. And that's uh, it's a win, I, I would win, say win. a lot of people have even said oh well i'm sure tom doesn't have this problem and it's like i have the same problems <laughs> there's no i just communicate with them like yeah. they're on the yes. same team as me it's the yeah. same as if i um i don't know i would say it's almost like a police officer police officers on the same team as me he's, he's there to protect me help me although sometimes if i do something wrong <laughs> yeah. he's there to pull me over and give me a speeding ticket too right, yeah, right but at the right. same time Hard it's not love. my enemy yeah. right? right and i think a lot of people get it uh you know i i get calls like and i get to listen to a lot of the recorded calls that uwm has with our team members yep. and it's something on a weekly basis that i'm having to have these conversations with our edge family and say hey why are you talking to them this way, right? right? Like, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. not think that they just would love to push a button and get it done? What you have to realize is if this industry got any easier, they'd automate our job, Yep. right? Yeah, I Correct. mean, it would Correct. be a point to where, um, you know, Amazon 
would come up and they have the technology the ai technology nowadays is insane yeah right right, right, right i mean right. with chat gpt with everything to where you have to question and wonder you know i hope i get to have 33 years in this industry like right, you right right, right. it's great. because they're always working to find a way to make things easier and faster in the way that technology is going that does put our jobs in jeopardy so when you have an issue right i uh, there's one i was talking with uh, our our uh, concierge rachel from uwm the other day and they're like yeah this loan officer has a deal that's only a 10 percent loan to value but it's a condo right and you know the condo rules like you have to show there's no deferred maintenance and they put came back that you know they don't answer that question so the originator's pissed because like it's a 10 percent loan to value deal like Right. Pull your head out of your ass. What's going on? It doesn't, you don't get it. Like sellability of a loan, it doesn't matter. I've had guys with $30 million in the bank that are borrowing 200 grand and they get conditioned the same way that uh, I do, you know, or anyone, right? It comes down to there's guidelines. It's your job to understand that when there are issues, that's your chance to shine, right? Amen. That's your chance to be able to prove. Like, what happens when there's issues with you, right? Do you blow up? Do you yell at people? Do you blame everyone else? You know, the, the true differentiator, in my opinion, of those that are successful in this industry and those that are not, really come down to when something goes wrong. Yep. Right? No, that's the truth. I mean, I think that, and I've seen it a couple times in this office where an appraisal will come in low. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> you guys, here's the deal. At these companies like Fairway, at these bigger companies, you don't have the ability to call underwriting. Yeah. You don't have, you know, you're lucky to talk to your processor, let alone underwriters, which yeah. you don't talk to. So please don't abuse it. But I think that the key that Tom talked about is it's all about communication. Mm -hmm. How do you handle that low appraisal? Yeah. Right? We're the trusted advisors. Be confident and... I saw an appraisal that came in low by another one of the loan officers in the office. <clears throat> the appraisal was seventeen thousand over list price, but it wasn't thirty, which is what the clients offered. Oh. Hell, that's a beautiful appraisal yeah, that's a win. to come over the deal. Yes. That's a win, yeah. right? And yet the concern was my appraisal came in low. Yeah. And I said it's all about how we present this oh, stuff 100%. to people and 100%. the confidence you have. Yeah. And um he handled it like a champ. I mean, yeah. like he was a seasoned veteran. And so the clients and the agents were happy as could be. Yep. So, That's how it goes. And you hit on a great, you know, a great point that I hope those that are listening really take that to heart, right? Like you need to be positive even when the situation isn't positive, right? Um, yep. Hey, the appraisal came in 13000 under uh, your asking price or what you bid on it. Yep. But... It was seventeen thousand over what it was listed for, and you put a thirty thousand dollar appraisal gap in there, so we're good. We only need thirteen thousand of it, right? <laughs> I know, which is the truth. <laughs> well, I mean, how do you, you know, even situations like I have uh, um, a loan commitment that was due yesterday that I had to tell, um, I had to tell the agent I, I can't issue it, and he's like, I told him like I'm not going to lie to you and say that this is a really amen. clean, smooth file. I'm going to tell you the issues that we have. I think we can get past them. Uh, let's work together to make sure this works. He's like, man, I'm scared. I've got three transactions attached to this, right? This is really important. And, you know, to me, what I'm doing, though, is I'm looking ahead. If this doesn't work, who's going to be to blame here? Right. Right. Yep. And it's always easy to blame the loan officer. But when you have good communication, like this agent, uh, it's Jeff Cicillo is the agent. Yeah. Um, and I'm dealing with his son who's also, you know, he's, he's a good real estate agent, but he's newer to the industry, like one year. I'm trying to tell him, listen, I don't want, if this thing doesn't work, I don't want you to be pissed at me. I wanted you to know, have full transparency on where right. we're at. And here's what I'm working towards. Here's my resolution. Here's what could go wrong though. Um, and it's been great, right? I'm, I've had to get another extension on our loan commitment, but it's how do you handle things that don't go right, right? That's the key to life, right? It I mean, is, it's, isn't it? It's, you know, with your I mean, kids, with oh, your wife, with, uh, love of God. I mean, with everything, right? Yeah, I mean, I've got three beautiful kids, two grandkids, and 
<clears throat> they're in this mode now where they're younger. Um, my youngest one, Matt, great, great kid, but he hasn't had to learn where you get kicked in the, yeah. you know, what's, you know, often. Yeah. And it's hard. Um, but the reality is, is that we're all going to be fine. Yeah. Right. Look at yourself in the mirror every single day. Try to be positive. Our business, because we make so much money, can lead to some craziness, right? God knows I've had some a few habits that probably weren't the <laughs> smartest <laughs> habits in the world, right? But stay humble, yeah. right? And I think that that's this key to this deal is have fun, laugh, stay humble. It's a great business, you guys. I mean, I joke with people saying I got probably the best part-time job ever. Yes. These guys harass me yeah. in the office all the time. <laughs> oh, you're in the office today. Great to uh, see clock you. And, you know? Clock and overtime. Clock and one overtime, day. you know. <laughs> uh, it's, it's the best. Yeah, but, I mean, well. on the flip side, the money is amazing, yeah. right? And the gratification and the satisfaction that you get from seeing clients. Jake's got a closing today. Wait till you see these people at the table, man. They yeah. are so excited. Oh, yeah. And that's you all hanging fruit. That's where your next deal is because you're the trusted person that made this smooth as silk. 100%. Right? Yep. And so um, milk it. You know what I mean? And uh, like I said, Tom, I appreciate you. Yep. You are an inspiration. Um even though I'm better looking and smarter, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm you know. <laughs> uh, I like it. Well, well you know. I will uh, ask you this question, right? Because yeah. you've talked about this being, you know, joked about it, about being a part-time job. But you, a, I know you work all the time because if your phone rings, you answer it. But yeah. um, you're getting ready to, you bought, did you buy, you bought a house in Florida? Yeah, right? Fort Myers, yep. Beautiful. So... <laughs> What's your plans here the next four or five years? Like, give me, uh, where do you see, you know, where do you see yourself in five years? Obviously, above the dirt is one of the <laughs> most <laughs> yeah. like, Well, uh, you know, uh, on some days, you know what, <laughs> you know, it's always a wonder. But, yeah, no, Tom, I appreciate that. I'm not, you know, I love this business. It's yeah. a great business. And as long as my mind works, yeah. which on days you question, but... Um, I love this business. Yeah. I'm just going to do it down in Florida. Yes. Um, it's it's so cool because we've got new people coming on board all the time. All the time. All over this country. Yep. Right? And um, I'm excited to meet the people down there. Yeah. Fort Myers, right? Fort Myers. Yeah, yeah. it's a beautiful area. And got a villa. Um, but just get, you know, the winters were tough, man. You get uh, old and decrepit, it this breaks year. me down. <laughs> yeah, dude, I mean, it's this. spring break, well, and uh, we still have a foot of snow on the ground. And we still may have some more coming this week. It's but, crazy. Um, I'm going to keep grinding, buddy. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to be doing this. Uh, five years would be the deal, but yeah. it's yeah, a business. Yeah, but let's be honest. You, it's not, well, it's, no, I mean, it's not it's quite a, a need as much as where you enjoy it. Right. And you got to do something. Yeah. Right. I mean, I've got my brothers that are retired. Yeah. You get bored. Yeah. And then you don't read materials. You got to stay active. Stay sharp, right? right? Keep your brain a sponge instead of it turning into a rock. And Yeah. You know, your wife, um, she's kind of in the industry a little bit as well, too. Yeah. Right? She works for Fannie Mae. Yeah. And um, it's super cool. You know, I learned so much from that end of it. Yeah. Uh, you know, but we don't talk much shop. You yeah. Know? No. I mean, I overhear conversations, but we never talk about it because she's got it's so private and yeah. so secure. Yep. That. Um, but we're both in the business. Yeah. And she can work. She's an amazing and, woman, by the way. I really like your wife. Thirty years. Yeah. It you know? takes a lot of. Uh, I don't know. It takes a lot of sac sacrifice, compromise yeah, to be no, to be married. Uh, communication, buddy. Yeah, I mean that's I mean, the. My, she, she's been through a lot, yeah. right? And I think that that's. I watch you and uh, your beautiful wife Nicole, and um, it's it's work, right? It is work, but that's everything, yeah. you guys. It's not going to just be my way 100%. or the highway, right? It's compromise, and that's the same with the kids and everything. Same with your real estate partners. Yeah. With, uh, it's relationship building, right? Relationship building has uh, has its pros and cons. Every yeah. relationship, sooner or later, you know, even with real estate agents, and this is what I've seen people I know that have been in the industry 20-plus years struggle with, right? When we talk about what happens when things don't go right, right? Right. We've covered it once today. I don't know why I'm on this topic, but it's one that's important, right? Yeah, right. Um, I've used the term even swallowing the frog. And a lot of people will be like, well, what the hell does that mean? I'm like, well, 
if you wake up in the morning and you swallow a frog, everything else tastes better for that right. day. So, yep. you know, um, that really means like if you have something lingering, you have a deal that uh, you don't think is going to work, but you gave a pre-qualification letter for, own it, right? Yeah, Swallow yeah. the frog. Call that agent and say, hey, listen, um, the guy uh, said that he was he works 40 hours a week. You know, my pay stub I had was the next week I get one at 28 hours and no PTO. And now we're variable income and it doesn't work. All of us have had those situations. Yep. Man up. The winners. Woman up. The people that are actually winning this industry, though, they end up building more rapport in those instances than losing business, right? Yeah. Like, oh, well, that makes sense. That really sucks. Like, Because I, I do feel bad for that agent. They ended up working for free. The same as I did. Not only did I work for free, I paid money to work, right? Because right. we pay for credit reports. We pay for... Uh, I don't know, sometimes I'm paying for appraisals, like things that don't go through, and you're actually paying to work. Yeah, but I think, I mean, get back to the whole marriage and any relationship, whether it's realtors, you here, it's easy to say, I'm done, I'm yeah. out. You know, that's just a cop out, right? But I think that you have to dig in, you have to communicate, but more importantly, you got to be honest with yourself. Like yep. you said, I mean, I left Amic, and I probably... Um, sacrificed a tremendous friendship because it was me expecting him to do my work. Yeah. Right? And that's just not going to way that's it's not going to happen. So this transition here with the company, what we're surrounded with, there is no better. And you're, you know, so, but it, you still have to go and get up and hustle yeah. and be accountable. 100%. To, because nobody's going to hold you accountable. Nobody's, yep. you know, Tom's not saying, Mike, what are you doing today? Yep. It's that's, up to you guys. That's been the shift, though. I called it out earlier for you, but that's the shift yeah. for you. Because it yeah, wasn't, you weren't it. that way when you started no, here. Shit. I mean, I, mean I know Andy and I had some conversations like, man, Mike's Mike's pissed off that uh, <laughs> this didn't get out. Like, well, why, who's he pissed at? Like, I know. I you know. know. And, and I've watched it shift, right? Yeah. Which is really cool. And I think you get to enjoy your job a little more when you realize oh, that, this. yeah, I am responsible. Yep. And not only am I responsible, I'm responsible for what? I'm responsible for communication, yep. right? And sometimes that communication sucks. It's a great business. Yeah. I mean, I'm telling you what. There, you said it best when it is a passion is it really a job? Yeah. You know, I don't think so. No, I don't I think mean, so. I mean, you will not find a better job. Yeah, the highs are high. The lows are gross. Yeah. But keep balanced. Stay steady. Keep making your phone calls. Yep. And hustle. Yeah, 100%. Well, <clears throat> I think we've got to the end of this, Mikey. Is there, uh, if there's one thing you could tell our listeners on something you would have done differently, right? Being a, a veteran for 30 plus years in this industry, owning one of the, you know, I would say one of the most prestigious uh, private mortgage groups in, in, in my market, uh, in the Twin Cities. What would you wish you would have known um, if, the, you know, five years into this industry that, that you know today? Um, and I mentioned it earlier, Stay humble, you guys. You're going to make more money than 90% of the people in this world. And you can get goofed up, um, Rolexes and all this other fanciness. Just stay true to yourself and hustle. It's up to you guys. But how you come across to others is going to be indicative of your success. If you're kind, if you're humble, if you truly care about people, yeah. i.e. this cat, um, you're going to win. So I got, you know, like you said, money does goofy things, but you just got to keep keep grinding. I like it. Well, Mike, I uh, appreciate you, brother. Thanks for uh, showing up early yeah. and joining us today. Thanks for, you know, bringing the excitement that you do in the office, continuing to... Um, Continuing just to work hard, right? Work yeah. hard, work by example. Um, we're grateful for you. So thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Appreciate you guys. We look forward to next week's episode to be determined who it is. I hope you all are going to join us here coming up for some of our events that we have. We will be our grand opening here, April 28th in Minnetonka. And UWM Live coming up as well here on May 3rd and 4th, which will be an amazing event. So thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day.